TERFs, or trans exclusionary radical feminists. They willfully deny the fact that trans women are women. Personally, I think it's a garbage hot take, but thanks to some powerful allies, it's still around stinking up the feminist movement. And it's not just famous witches, we've got our own TERFs right here. Speak Up For Women, or SAFWA, are an organisation who lobby openly on the idea that trans women aren't women. Last year, SAFWA booked an event at Massey University called Feminism 2020, so they could finally raise the voices of some of women's worst women, including two who'd been banned from Twitter for hate speech. Eventually, petitions were signed, protests were held, and Massey cancelled the event. But it wasn't the end of the road for these bigots. You have to wonder, when did feminists become such bitches? To break it down, a trans-exclusionary radical feminist excludes trans women as being identified as women. Is that correct? Yeah, or they just exclude trans women from feminism in general. What is it that they think that trans people are trying to accomplish if not just living authentically? Oh, there's lots of theories. One of it is that someone like me is apparently a pervert who wants to get into women's spaces to sexually assault women. God, that's Over quite a full-on accusation, yeah, isn't yeah, it? it is. And I've actually had a few of them say that to me, that uh, like when I go and use the calls or something like that, I'm deliberately exposing myself to antagonise women. That seems wild. 12 years of transition, <laughs> yeah. just so I can see a boob. No. Yeah. <laughs> Think of the term turf. I think it's a derogatory term. It is taken as an offence, I understand, by some in those movements. Mm. I think actually if you look at it in itself, it um, probably speaks of truth. Yeah. I'm like, is it derogatory if it's true? Yeah, so there was going to be an event held at Massey. Yeah. From what we've gathered from looking at the other events run in the UK, it was basically going to be a whole bunch of TERFs standing around pontificating about trans people. It's so interesting to me about TERFs because, like, the thing that we hear time and time again when an event gets cancelled is that we're being deplatformed. Yeah. You know, no one will platform us. We were going to talk to one and, and literally none of them would face up. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't mind at all that there are some women who raise issues that they think concern them as women. I just don't like this hate thing that I sense growing. Um, Where do you sense that growing? Well, oh. from these women, this Megan Murphy, yeah. it seems to come from hate and, and an absolute denial that there is any such thing as trans anything. And yeah. I just think that that is uh, ignorant. Yeah. I certainly get the impression that uh, she's venal. And I guess if I had more time or an ability to do it, I would debate her because I can be venal too. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happened now with the Feminism 2020 event? Uh, it's got a new venue and it looks like it's probably going ahead. Do you know where the venue is? The Banquet Hall at Parliament. And it was most likely booked by David Seymour of the ACT Party. What the fuck? Yeah. Actually. Yeah, because freedom of speech. What the fuck, David Seymour? <laughs> <laughs> He's been all, like, cosy-cosy with the trans community at certain points, and this is just, like, a fucking dagger in the back. What the fuck is he...? Oh. Free speech. <laughs> we found out it was happening at Parliament, and we was like, oh, God, who sponsored that? And we found out it was David Seymour, and I was like, oh, my God. So I started texting him. <laughs> He sent me this photo. He kind of didn't confirm that it was him, but then Sean Plunkett's radio show, The Magic yeah. Talk or whatever, he confirmed it as a freedom of speech thing. Annie O'Brien called me and said, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, we are being censored from having a discussion about feminism at a university. And I said, look, I think this is disgraceful. Um, I will host the, the event at, at Parliament. And I think it's important that these folks, uh, who are not hateful, by the way, uh, they are people who want to debate 
as a parliamentarian, and I think it's important that it's able to happen because at the end of the day, you end up with a lot more victims in a society that doesn't have free discussion than one that allows it. Marianne Street said you achieved uh, as one MP what... Well, first of all, it's not censorship to not hold the event at Massey. It's a private institution that's allowed to have anyone in there that they want and pull anything that they want. Freedom of speech doesn't mean equal access to all venues. I don't think it's crazy that a university institution says, hey, we think the kind of ideas that you're espousing are essentially hate speech, and we've decided that that is not actually up for discussion here. The freedom of speech thing is, it's a tool that's being used by people to oppress masquerading as a virtue. I think it's designed to wind us up. The event was originally scheduled to be um, today, mm. um, which is the start of Trans Awareness Week. And Trans Awareness Week is important because it's a week leading up to Trans Day of Remembrance, which is when, when we remember our dead. So, <laughs> sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. They know what they're doing. I think their whole MO is to try and make trans people do something stupid so that they can use it as ammunition against us. Sorry. No, don't apologise. Would it make it better if a cis person did something fucking stupid? <laughs> <laughs> this is the front of my T-shirt, and then this is the back. I am honestly, genuinely a little bit nervous about the prospect of it. You know that feeling where you're like, oh no, she's gonna do something wrong. I've shat like four times in back benches across the street just because my tummy's all funny. But I did have a beautiful um, medium rare sirloin steak <laughs> with some duck fat potatoes. My goal is just to stay as calm and as polite as possible. And honestly, if I pull that off, it'll be a victory for the cause and also a personal victory for me because I'm not sure that I've ever been both of those things for a sustained period of time. <laughs>a huge win for free speech. Speak Up for Women have told us that if we release any of the footage we took while we were inside that they will sue us for trickery, trespass and defamation. They sent out a big email to everyone who attended the event um, looking to fundraise money to sue me, <laughs> which honestly is invigorating. I don't understand the logic behind advocating for free speech only when it's yours. So um, I'm just going to walk you through what happened. Here we go. So it was me, it was Amber, who's our producer, and it was Ainsley, who was the DP on our show. We're walking along here. Oh, OK, cool. Thank you. Is it what now? We can take photos through there. Oh, cool. It's a good turnout. Honestly, I was shocked. We came over here, someone found us seats. Then they said there'd be a Q&A. So I thought, well, I'll be respectful. I'll wait for the Q&A. That was honestly a horrible mistake. I cannot tell you just how boring this event was. I just hated every second of it. Anyway, David Seymour was there, God bless him. Um, I'll use yellow, because he's an act. It's nice for them to get some actual time on camera. And there was four speakers, only really one who everyone cared about, which was Megan Murphy. And then imagine all of these other people are bigots. So they started talking, they spoke for like an hour and a half. And then Megan Murphy spoke. And I gotta say, she's fucking uncompelling. And she said some pretty horrible shit about trans women. She was basically the equivalent of someone being like, no offense, but. Anyway, it came to question time. I put my hand up and uh, the moderator looked at me directly and was like, mm, I don't think so. And they asked somebody else a question. And then this guy, this poor little man, who had no idea about what was going on here, shoulder tapped me, gave me a mic. I stood up, tried to make a few jokes, absolutely zero response. Still not the worst audience I've ever had. <laughs> and I asked my question, which in hindsight was not actually a very good question. Too long, double negatives. Honestly, it's mortifying. <laughs>
The moderator came over to me and she started to like try and grab the mic off of me and I was kind of holding on to it because I love to perform. At this stage, Amber, our producer, she was filming from back here. Unbeknownst to me, this woman had come over here and been like, stop filming. Amber had stopped filming and then she assaulted her. I'm just talking to the security because actually like grabbed me and yanked me. Oh my gosh, is she? Amber, I'm so sorry. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, so I just wanted to just let them know that it was before I was actually just asked to leave, she grabbed me. Literally one of the things they were talking about was about the intimidation that they faced. And then Amber got assaulted. <laughs> It feels utterly bizarre. It just seems bizarre to me because even women who have led feminist movements yes. and been kind of at the cutting edge of that, sometimes... And many of those women happen to be members of the rainbow community too. Yeah, exactly. You know? So my question is, is there a point where you're progressive and then you stop progressing? And oh, <laughs> I've oh, had a good welcome life. Welcome to the confusion, my darling. <laughs> in, in terms of the feminist movement, how do you feel about that now? Would you identify as a feminist? I am um, always going to identify as a feminist. And would you identify TERFs as feminists as well? Or would you just call them TERS? <laughs> um, I think some of them are feminists. They've just lost their way. That's very generous. A lot of them are just fucking dickheads. <laughs> <laughs> There's the answer I was looking for. Oh, I'm shit. sorry to have missed your call, but if you leave me a message or send me a text, I will get back to you just as soon as I can. Thank you. Hey, David, it's Alice here. I'm just waiting outside to see if you want to have a chat. Um, I felt like I didn't get the opportunity to exercise my right to free speech, so I'm just wondering if you could come down here and give me some parliamentary help with that. Anyway, I'll be outside. Thanks.